بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب زدنی علما رب شاہلی صدری و یسر لی امری و حل وقت من لسانی اللہ ما ففرنا فی الدین You can start on Okay, uh, so uh, I guess we're doing the Mina backpack, right? So Mina backpack is Oh, this should be fun Okay, let me give you an idea of the size Basically you, I'm, I'm going to hang this backpack behind me so you can see what I mean in terms of size okay this is actually a gym bag okay and you will notice i'm gonna hang it right behind i'm gonna wear i'm gonna wear it like a school backpack so you get an idea of the size it's a little uh let's see if you guys can see it oh it's a little yes. bigger than, it's like a camping backpack right it's look at the size like it's coming all the way to my bum i'm like five four okay so it's coming to my bum it, and it's like a hiking bag okay so that's basically the size. Why are we not taking carry-ons? It's a waste. You don't need it. So let's pretend today is the day where I am. They're telling us to get ready because morning we're leaving for Mina. Okay? No wheel backpack because you have to walk in such a huge crowd. It would be really hassle. The backpack should be carry on your back or in your hand. Because you and no matter what, there is not like a proper system of the road. So you have to drag it on the, on the, like the... The carpet, the mat, or the, the sand, or the gravel, yeah. or everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm today. They have announced it that they're going to take us to Mina in the morning. So I'm, you know, today's my day. I got up. You do all the sunnas. You clip your nails. You clean up your hair because you're not in ihram right now, right? You clip your nails. You shower. You do the sunnah. You can even put perfume on because you're not in ihram. In now, your body, not on your ihram. Not on your clothes. Yes, not on your clothes. On your body. Okay. Now I'm like, okay, I'm clean. My I have no hair on my body, no napak hair, no, you know, no unclean hair. And I have clipped my nails and everything. Now I'm going to be in Ehram, okay? So I'm changed my clothes. I put on Ehram. Here I am in Ehram, okay? Here's what I'm packing for Mina. I mean, even now that I'm packing, I'm thinking in my head, it's like, I don't need to, you know? But <laughs> just for the sake of it, in Come case. And you have to turn your camera down because we cannot see. No, no, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to show you what it is, okay? <laughs> So here's my gym bag, okay? I woke up, I got, I'm going to Mina. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, so Fajr, they're going to take us to Mina. And I'm taking literally one outfit, one outfit and one hijab. In my opinion, you don't need more than this. And why? I mean, you can pack two outfits, but honestly, you don't need more than this. And I'll tell you why. Besides the outfit and hijab, I'll keep an extra pair of undergarments. undergarments. Okay. And the other thing I have is my toiletry bag. Let me see if you guys can see it. Okay. My toiletry bag. And we talked about packing the toiletry bag. I think I is going to go through it. But you can see my hook is sticking out. My soap is hanging on the outside. Right. And I have... And the reason I kept a see-through toiletry bag is so I can see what's in there. What, 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 what do I need, right? It's easier. Okay. And let me see. Okay. I have a, a Ziploc bag, which, I mean, sorry, a pencil case. It has my panty liners or whatever you need to do. I say, hold on. I need to cough. I'm sick. Sorry. So in that toiletry bag, like the all the things, inshallah, someone will show you. You have your shampoo. If you really want to use your shampoo or conditioner, uh, so you can keep it shampoo, conditioner, body wash, your toothbrush, your toothpaste. And um, uh, and if you are you want something else, like for example, you need some creams or something unscented, so you can keep that cream inside your backpack. Some panty liners, flashable wipes. Yeah, so I have my sorry, yes. panty liners. Yes. I have my I have my portable bidet. You guys see the bidet? Yeah. Do you want me to open up and show it or we already saw it? Right? No, it's okay. okay. Yeah. I have this. My toothpaste, uh toothbrush. And I had a Ziploc bag actually with a few i only have two in here right now but i had more than this okay the one extra thing i had was wipes at all times at all times i had them in my mina bag and i had them yeah right yep this is a wipe yeah flushable wipes yes very 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 important so let's pack the mina backpack right so i have one outfit i have uh undergarments 
<clears throat> toilet tea bag. Literally. Me and Asia overpacked. And we're telling you from our mistake. Yeah. Why do why and why like for the mina backpack? Is this soft backpack? You can even, you know, squish it, put it as your pillow, that's it. And um uh, the daily really ones you can put it like a two outfit, but trust us, like or not, you will <laughs> end it up using only one. That's so it. you see how this is squishable? Really? Like I can ball it up. When we got there, uh Asya already showed you the Mina Camp pictures, right? There's no space. We were struggling to, everybody was struggling to keep their carries. It was completely unnecessary. Oh, and sorry. So one more thing I'm going to add. Sorry. You can get that backpack from the Amazon or any other. like Anywhere. Backpack. Anywhere. Right? The one extra Five thing. Five days in Mina. Yeah. So one extra thing also uh, that I'm forgetting right now is a towel from the hotel. I grabbed the towel, hotel towel. I put it in here. Yeah, the, but the not the big one, uh, the medium size one. Some yeah. you have, or do you want me to show it? No, no, I have it. Okay, I have it. I have it. This is the one, the size we pack it for a hotel. Five days continue, uh, continue continually. So you will be living in a. Yeah, family. this was it. This is what I took just to wipe my face, and everything. My toiletry bag has my soap. It has my face wash and everything. So, and you will be coming on these parts, like the sleeping bag and everything. Inshallah, just be. So, you know, face wash and everything. These these are our these days, um, things that we prefer before our skin and stuff. But remember, you're going to Hajj. It's meant to be a time of Hajj. That's what you're looking at. So the government has made it nice for us, but that's it. So what happens? I got up. Uh, can you read it? I'm looking at the questions. Let's see comments. Okay, yeah, so. Well, uh, so our hiking sandal in our feet. Someone will describe that the hiking sandal part. Why we don't have like the two pairs of the sandals in the Mina backpack, someone? Okay, so let me go one by one. Uh, how many days in Mina? Five. Yes. Uh, what is the sleeping situation like? Um, any sleeping situation is. This is me. Right here is the next bed. It's on the floor. Uh, Asya, can you share the screen? If you do, you, do you know? Could you be able? Would you be able to do that? You want me to pull that screen? Uh, okay, yeah, sure. While I while you, while I go move on to the next situation, you do need your own salam mat at all times. Remember, we told you that's part of that's always in our backpack, the backpack that we had in Haram. We are going to have it right now too. It's on our it's on our shoulders at all times. That light backpack. So salam mat with we should be with you at all times. I mean, if Dar al Salaam told you, sure, take your own towel. We had our own towels too, but we were like, whatever, we're taking the hotels. But yeah, you should take your own towel. It's the it's the right thing to do, I guess, right? Um, and what about shoes? So we discussed indoor shoes and we discussed outdoor shoes. We don't need the indoor shoes. The indoor shoes are only for haram, inside the haram. It's so that you have clean indoor shoes and you can walk inside the haram. You only need your outdoor sandals. Me and Asiya had hiking sandals. Whatever you guys have, that's your outdoor stuff. But because we had hiking sandals, honestly, whenever we need to put water on our feet or when Asiya showered, I didn't shower and Mina, whenever whenever we need to shower, we just showered with our hiking sandals there. If you're going to get, uh, if you're going to get, uh, I don't know, if you're one of those people who get annoyed, um, I mean, this is the time where you hold your annoyance, right? You survive. Um, you can keep like a cheap, thick, thin pair of flip flops to walk around Mina and the washrooms in Mina, but travel as light as you can okay and here's why it's fajr time we're driving to mina okay we're driving to mina we got to mina what are we doing in mina literally just sitting there doing zikr praying and that is it and eating that is it so you don't need to really change for the next day when you're going to arafat you're not doing anything there's no labor there you're sitting in a room it's a, it could be a little hot there's air conditioning there are fans whatever Next morning, you wake up and you go to Arafat. You see why you don't need an outfit? Unless by chance you get into an accident, especially for women, you get your period or whatever. So you might feel like, oh, no, no, I need to shower. I need to change. I need to take my tablet. Sure. So that's the only reason I'm keeping that one outfit. We went to Arafat. We did our dua. We made our dua, everything. We went to Muzalfa. Still same outfit. Went to Muzalfa. 
same outfit as the time of morning of when the first morning I came to Mina. Okay, went to Muzalfa, spent the night there. Now I'm completely dirty. I look like what a haji is supposed to look like. Okay, it's the day, time of Hashar. Okay, I'm we we went to Muzalfa, slept, spent the night there, woke up at Muzalfa, prayed Fajr. The bus took us back to Mina. We walked to do Rabi. Now you have a choice. You can do your Rami, return back to Mina, or you can go to your, um, or you can go to Haram, or go to your hotel room and change and go back and go to the Haram. I, even when you change, you're still in Haram. I'm just changing because I was really dirty, right? Mm. And so, um, that and why did we do that? You don't have to do it the first day. You can go to Rami and you can go back to Mina camp. You don't have to go right away to the Tawaf, and you don't have to do it. The reason we did it is because both, ya both Yasir Qadi and Umar Suleiman's lecture said the first day there are the least people because everybody's like, we're already tired. We're going to go back to Mina and rest. And no doubt, like um, if you are not feeling well and you will feeling so tired, don't try to go because don't try to go. Yeah. On the first day, you need the energy. You need uh, energy. And Alhamdulillah, we feel like young now. <laughs> Still now we feel the young ourselves. So and uh, because we are young, so we are able to do it. But the older people will be it's harder for them. But uh, no matter what, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give the himma to each and every hujjat because they they bring them there. And because of just because of the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we have this much courage and this much himma. We can handle it the whole day because uh, sound like the day of Arafat and the night of Muzalfa is the one of the very lessonful day and night of your life. You will never ever forget forget that life, uh, in that time of, of the day and night in your whole life. You will always remember and always feel so pleasurable whenever you will be go back for that, that day and that night. But once you are going there and you are examining it by yourself, you must be tired. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants every hujjaj to be feel the, uh, to get the, feel the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get tired. Why you get tired? Why you get dirty? But just because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You came here just to, to, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you are in that state where you will never be wants to be like that kind of straight, not be in a part of the dirt, not sleeping on the stoning, stone uh, rocks and everything. And it's going to be so hot and everything. You Once you will be completely out of your uh, comfort zone, no matter what kind of packages you are buying. And Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with a beautiful journey of the Hajj. But your packages are not the guarantee of the uh, what kind of the treatment you will get over there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the test to each and every hujjaj and they have their own test. If you have feeling a difficult the weather, that weather is your test. If you have feeling the some medical problem, that medical problem is your test. If you are so attached with your child, that child is your test. Like so everyone has like their own examination paper. And none of the examination paper is matching to the other person and everyone is going through their own exam. And after that, you all will be able to done be call yourself a hujjaj and that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make each and every step easy for you. Just be tawakkal on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recite your dua, make as much duas as possible. And inshallah, these are the, the very small things which we are discussing right now, the hajj essential and all these stuff. For once you are done with the Hajj, you will forget about this, these parts. You don't care about these parts. Um, any very good question, me and Asya were actually discussing it. Yes, our group had already decided that we are going to, we before we went to Mina, we, before we even went to Hajj, we already decided, God forbid anything gets uh, goes wrong. That was a whole separate story. But in our minds, we had already decided. And the group is not like, <clears throat> we, it was last year, we Just all six went of individually. Us. Yeah, last year we, yeah. we went individually. It was us, Um, it was me, my husband, Asya, Asya's husband, and another friend, Kiran and her husband, right? So we decided among us, among ourselves, that yes, we're going to go from Buzalfa when they drop us back to Mina, we're going to go stoning, um, because they drop us back at Fajr, right? So we have yes. time to So we go stoning after Zohar. So at Zohar, we praised Zohar and we left in the heat. So we went to stone and then we went to our hotel room. So we knew we were going to be able to get our slippers for the haram slippers. If yeah, you because to... that's our plan to go to our hotel room first and wait over there for our um, Hadai and the Qurbani, uh, which has been done. 
we are waiting for that. So that's our plan. Yes. So we decided we knew we were going to go get our slippers, change and everything and then go do tawaf and sahi when the weather gets nicer because Rami was right after Zohar, right? So we did Rami. We, I mean, we did Zohar. We went for Rami in the heat. And then, so you, you know, the walk is very long from Rami to the Haram, especially when you've been tired. Uh, stoning the Shaitan is called Rami. Oh, stoning the Shaitan is called, is called Rami. So we knew that uh, we were already tired from Arafat to Muzalfa. We were tired. So walking from stoning to Haram, it's, it's the Three hours. It's three hours from some of the sister did it. Yeah, many people did it. Many I mean, people did that's it. That's off to them. But we found a taxi. The buses we found them too expensive. They were like forty real. And make them. sure on that day, if you are if you are travel agents and somewhere someone's are not taking you to the haram, and if you have the convince to get take you to the haram, because this uh, this year I was hearing like uh, lots of people have the plans. Their companies are providing them a plan. They will providing them a buses or taxis. Yeah. So go with them. Don't try to go by your own. Your own self. Yeah. We didn't you go with them. The last year we don't have any option. We didn't have that right. We were. Yes. We were we're going from stoning to haram by ourselves so we found a taxi we had to and really make sure party. like on that day someone yeah, they have to keep like a some extra uh real with them because yep. the taxi driver charging crazily that is a day of eat and they are asking because usually from the jamarat uh the shaitan is stoning place to the makkah it's a like, three hours walk and it's the uh, taxi driver will charge you 60 real but that day taxi every single taxi driver is asking for us like 650 400 500 Rate, uh, we really had to argue. Yeah, we, argued like, we got to 200 reals, but we really argued. Okay. Really, and we waited a really long until we feel like we yeah. are sitting in the fire. We were we were we were waiting really long. So we really. went to our hotel room. So we knew we were gonna get our slippers. If your group decides that hey, no, we're gonna do stoning and we're gonna go take this taxi right to the haram and we're gonna do the tawaf and sahi. That's your plan. So keep your slippers, your indoor slippers with you. You don't want to be tired. You're already exhausted from Arafat, that Muzalfa. You don't want your feet to get exhausted. So yes, to answer your question, Annie, it really depends on what your group has planned. We had already planned. We're going to go to our hotel room first. And so if uh, you guys are, uh, some of you are with uh, Nusuk and you are not planning to go with the Pakistani plans and any other plans. And if you are not in, uh, be like in a Maktab A, and you are in the al camps, which is like a maktab number 649. Make uh, So make sure, like, keep this in your mind. Start walking now, sir, days, because it's in, it's a little bit hot in the Canada. Uh, so start walking yourself and feeling the little bit of the heat and get used to of it because walking from there to the Jamarat and coming back, if you lost somewhere, you have to walk a little more in the Mena and it, it take us like a 16 hour. Uh, 16 kilometer and 12 kilometer per day walk. Okay. And so, yeah, because when we went, we didn't have as much of a population as it is going to be now. We were limited, yes. right? We were right after COVID. You guys are going to be full odd. So there's a lot more walking. Now, to answer, uh, no one asked me this, but I know this is going to come up. Okay. So I'll I'll bring my thing stuff and then Yeah, I'll... yeah, you go ahead. So, you went, if, if you go for Rami and Sahi, I mean, if you go for Tawaf and Sahi the first day, I mean, you have a chance you can go to your hotel, change and stuff, you know, come back and um, come, and then you come back to Mina, right? You have to get to Mina. Uh, Amna, I'll answer this question just in a, in, in a moment. Um, okay, so uh, you come back to Mina. Now you're thinking, wait, I changed my clothes and at the hotel and I still have my bag at Mina. The bag, this bag, this gym bag, this bag that you, this backpack that you made for Mina, like it's squeezable, right? See, it's not very big. Um, this backpack that you made for Mina is, you're not going to carry it to Arafat. And you're not going to carry it to Muzalfa. This, your Mina is your home for five days. You're going to leave it there. Okay? You're some... leaving, you will see many people who will say, oh, no, no, we have to carry our carry-ons. They're saying they're going to change our camps. Or we're saying there's a lot of chaos and confusion going there. Leave and, this uh, yeah, Mina. Yeah. Don't bring it because this is this is your in case outfit. Okay, this is your in case outfit. Now you went first day you went for stoning and let's say first day you decided to go uh to do your sahi and your tawaf and you also go happen to go to your hotel room you changed and everything you came back 
you're wearing a fresh new outfit. Now you're there for four more days. You already had one day in Mina. Now you're there for four more days. And in four more days, two days, the new fresh outfit you're wearing. And the next two days, if you want to change, that's it. Don't try to carry more than that. And now you're wondering too, we're going to be sweaty. Like you, the next day you're going to wake up, you're going to go for stoning again. You're going to be sweaty again. You're going to be dirty, dirty there regardless. Sorry, Saman. Well, because in uh, bus, once you are in a mina camp, you will hear lots of people when they are taking you to the Arafat, lots of people are grabbing their hand carries and backpack and they said, no, no, we have to take it because they will be sending us back to the hotel and there and here and there. And you know what? That is a moment once you are feeling like if our suitcase will lost, what will happen and this and that. But no matter what, leave your suitcases, your belongings. Uh, to the uh, to in Mina camp, nothing will be lost. Don't worry about that. No matter somebody saying what kind of story they are sharing, their people, what happened to them last year, because everyone has their own story and everyone has their own experience, but nothing ended up with the, because if you are uh, carrying your backpack and your hand carries, what will happen, you will be hassled the day. And we saw this, so many people, like uh, poor people there, they will be like getting really tired because the night, once the day of Arafat is done, you cannot imagine how much the people get tired. We will, once we are standing in the line, going to the uh, Mozalfa and even though not walking, that moment was so, so heat up because we are, once we are seeing so many women are, uh, getting unconscious and uh, falling uh, falling in the grounds and like because it's so heat up so that time even me and someone is alhamdulillah we are fine but looking at them make my bp low and i was drinking the get rid uh, oh, sorry not the get rid electrolytes yeah and we are uh, giving them the electrolytes so these are the bottles you will find everywhere no matter in a haram in a everywhere they're park. distributing it le left and right bottles, once you get it just grab them and pour this electrolyte as much as you will feel comfortable as a taste and bring it constantly, as constantly as please. possible. Don't worry about you will have to be ended up going to the washroom so much. You won't because you that's why we have the toiletry kit, the gloves and everything. That's why we have it. Okay. Um, yeah. Ask me just a second. I'm just going to answer these questions just before we move on. What about men? Ehram, how many pairs do we need? Taya, my husband kept three. I think four. He only ended up using two, I think. Yeah, <laughs> my husband. But for Mina, no. The Ahram, I'm telling you, he packed from here to take to Mecca. We didn't keep extra Ahrams for Mina. Men def, men didn't. I, I don't know if you're... Uh, OS kept it. My husband kept it one and he ended up using it. Okay, my husband didn't keep it because we were going to uh, the hotel. I, or maybe he kept it. I can't remember. Again, don't need it. We kind of overpacked, right? So maybe one ihram they're wearing, one ihram if they're really disgusted, keep one extra ihram. So let's say you go to Muzalfa, you come back, you do the stoning, and you're like, well, first day, we're too tired. We cannot do tawaf today. We're going back to Mina right now. We're going to rest there. Okay, so you go back to Mina, you're resting, you're like, well, you know, I've been in, I've been in these clothes on the day I came to Mina, then the next day in Arafat, and uh, overnight in Muzalfa, I want to change. Okay, you took your extra outfit. By all means, go to the shower stand, which is right above the, so this is the toilet, this is the shower. Where am I? This is the toilet, shower, this is and it. And you are making your feet like this. And so you won't fall in. Up and right? it's going down. So, so you can shower on you can shower and change and when you do go for because now you're rested right so when you do go for stoning the next day and you're planning to go for tawaf it's everybody makes a trip to their hotel room so when you do when you go to your hotel room keep that dirty outfit with you go ch put it in your hotel room and if you're really bothered by it bring another extra one but you really don't need to again pack as this is survival this is survival okay this is survival we're not doing luxury here Okay, so that's but here I will say like um uh, like the because women are asking so many questions about the clothing. Just pack in case like two pairs of uh your uh, clothes. That would be perfectly fine. Not more than two, or even though I suggest it. I packed everything. Uh, always uh, extra. <laughs> that's my like. That's my case. Someone is like a lighter version of mine. And I survive. I yeah, survived. She survived. I, I took a shower. I use uh, my like a uh, shampoo, conditioner, each and everything because I am not combing and brushing my hair. So my hair get really dried and that the weather of the Makkah is make your hair so dry too. So that's why I put the conditioner, shampoo, body wash and everything. And I take a shower all four days. 
except yeah, I, for one day i take a shower all four days i came from the jamarat and it was it was super hard for me and i go directly to the washroom and sometime i ended up without wiping my body with a towel i just wear my clothes hey wear my hijab the long hijab which cover whole my body and i go into the camp of them and i and i'll feel like relaxed so the reason being asia gets migraines from heat yes she starts feeling sick i am fine with heat okay Uh, i i i'm i was fine with heat so it didn't bother me i had my own issues um i had to shower actually no i did have to shower one day in mina is this because i got my period remember so that's i i went to shower that one day that is it uh, but um other than that honestly and so again for those who came late i just want to show you look it's a gym backpack it's like a hiking bag when you turn it upside down this is the length that's it and look at this it's squeezable you need something that you can use as a pillow that is it right um what we Uh, the and i will quickly review it at the end of it when asia is done but yes. um somebody said about what are, are you saying chances of taking bath in in mina is one uh, honestly depending on your own preference you really don't need to right survival but i really survival. need to i i took a shower she needed to yeah really. um and uh staying cool is that that wonderful fan and water will do you good remember you're surviving just keep on telling yourself you're surviving make it keep on making dua and uh, hold on somebody said something about flip flops and carry ons okay can we walk in comfortable crocs flip flops or do we need to wear sports sandal um the hiking sandal of tiva all time imagine whatever you can wear while you're hiking because you we didn't have to walk a lot you guys most probably will have to and there's not always a road there sometimes there's gravel How does your feet feel if you were to go wear Crocs to hiking right now? It really depends on you. The reason I got sports sandal, I'll tell you why. I have my own issues. My feet go numb, and I wanted something that if it's un uneven, my foot is tight, and it's not hurting because I'm at Hajj. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt feet. I don't want to hurt my feet. So that's the. Somebody that. asked the question about the headache. If the shower and the wet hair, don't worry about the wet hair. Hair get dry over there so quick because of the hot weather. and plus uh, once you are inside your mina camps just take out off your uh, hijab yeah, yeah. and your hair get dry normally with the room temperature there's ac everywhere and um, and somebody is also asking an, another question that is a question about the arafat to muzalfa the past, oh, okay, okay. all the important thing and important belonging you're going to you're going to show it right now right we will keep uh, yes i will show it um, uh, we will keep everything inside the our hotel lockers So our, yeah, so your passport, your everything is in the hotel locker right now. All you got is cash. Leave it, please. Leave it behind. Uh, Inshallah, it'll be fine. Leave it behind. No, Alhamdulillah, with the Tiva sandals, we didn't end it up with any blister, any anything happened with our feet. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, rather than like having something to, uh, which we got it like by ourselves, uh, I'll let you know that that is story. What happened? Why I got the blister and why where did I get the idea of the blister bandage? um but that they like the sandal doesn't hurt us and that's, so, that's why we with the experience of the multiple hujjaj we recommended you like to get the tiva sandal we had a really good experience with the tiva sandals the previous hujjaj um yeah recommended this right so they were like no 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 we used it even when we came back to like whatever hiking we went when in haram where do you keep the indoor shoes in haram you are using the indoor okay shoes. let me share let me show now Okay, yeah. So this is Here, what the summons bag ended up, and um, and let me show you the few things added into the summon bag that plug, like the universal adopter goes into the summon backpack. No, uh, backpack. okay, you can put it in my backpack, but this has to be with you when you're going to Arafat and Muzalfa. So I figured it should be. Yeah, um, I I will show it like what I did it. Yeah. Okay, let me go. So that's the backpack. Do most of you buy it, or you have something that is. You know, Someone, can you read the question and answer them? Yeah, I am reading. I don't want to interrupt you. Uh, put your backpack lower. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay. How are the washrooms in Mina? There is maybe one washroom that has the American toilet. Okay, one. It's really hard to get into it. It's always filled with somebody. Mo majority of the washrooms are the standard Eastern toilets, which you squat. squat Double C. Sorry, yeah. Double C. You squat on, and the showers on top. Um. That's the case with mina washrooms. Um, okay, okay. everybody, I'll bring it like 
Uh, my Sorry. backpack for everyday use of haram, and even though I'm going to the Medina, Mazalpa, the night of the Mazalpa, I'll add the few stuff. Let me show it, like for the everyday use of haram, what I am ended up. Like, so in once I'm going for the Umrah, for example, I landed to the Makkah, and now I have to go for the Umrah. So the my backpack has these two things, which are which you guys are able to see it. One says the sanitizer. Are you able to see it? No, we're not able to see it. It says here. Yeah. I'm not answering your question in a bit. So it says sanitizer. The other one says the hand soap. Sorry about the light. So the hand soap and the sanitizer always hanging on the sides of my outside at all times. Yeah, all time. Okay. So no matter I am performing Umrah, going to Jamarat, going to Arafat, and anywhere I have this on my backpack, on the side of my backpack. Okay, and here, let me show, open my backpack inside. Um, first, I'll go with the outside. So the in outside, there is a one pocket out here, which you are able to see it clearly. Are you all able to see it? Yeah, here you go. So this pocket has the zipper. Close it. And once I open this magic pocket, it has so much stuff. So I pinned up, I told you guys like the baby pin, it's helped so amazingly with the baby pin, with the help of the baby pin, there's a tasbi which I uh, counter, which I count the my tawaf, the seven rounds of tawaf, okay? So it's always here. So I don't have to draw a dag in and finding it. So it's really attached with the pin here, okay? I can easily find that. And in there, I'll put like a sum of, uh, these tissue. Um, you remember the tissue tablets, yeah. Tissue tablets inside, and I put it. That's my own personal preference. Like because her hands get so dry, so um because of the heat and the dry weather atmosphere. So I put the hand hand lotion in there. I put this in there. The electrolyte always inside my backpack. There, electrolyte inside my backpack. And there's like a uh, chibistic, which is like... Again, uh, yeah, it, this is... And this is like uh, always in my backpack. Yeah. So I put these stuff in my backpack and my sunglasses or if you are wearing the glasses or sunglasses. So this is like inside my backpack. So I kept it in and now I close it. Okay. And now I am going to show you the what I'm going to fill it up inside. So here is the insight view of my life. Here you are able to see like each and every item. So I here's a, there, the pocket outside. It's hanging inside the backpack. You will notice she pinned it on the sewing line, not in the middle of the pocket because it can rip, right? Look at the material so soft. So she pinned it on the gray, dark gray part, the sewn. This. Even though I can pin it up here, sometime I did it, but that's fine. But for safe side, pin it up here. Okay, and they, this is my medication bag. And I'm going to show you what I put inside my medication bag, one by one. So this is all what she wanted for herself. Remember people, you guys have your own medication, right? Yes, that's the Tananol always in my backpack. Here you go, the Tananol. And here I come with the Emodium tablets. Very helpful. Everybody's stomach gets upset at least once. Yes. Uh, the eye drop because I my eyes get so dry over there, so I put. Yeah, I kept this too for dry eyes. Yes, you can put it like uh, according to your, your preference. Yeah. Thumbs, if you feel like somehow stomach upset, acidity or heartburn or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And here is a tablet of reactant, uh, anti allergy tablet, one tablet. Every this is our everyday bag. Uh, yes, Shaf. everyday bag. There is a, like a, a small one tablet of Torset, which is a probiotic. If you have any other probiotic, you can use that probiotic. And and uh, and uh, as you're able to see, one, two tablets, not more than that. This is like uh, for the sore throat, like you can suck that tablet. To like feed. strepsils and stuff, right? Yeah, like, strepsils and stuff. Shaf Shafak, your everyday bag is also your Arafat bag. You're only in Arafat for one day. It's literally And your here bag. I go the two tablets of Drywall. And and two tablets of Advil. If any of you guys have high blood pressure, diabetic, uh, you know, inshallah khair, I hope no one has it. But if you do, uh, you guys know your own medication, right? And how much you so use it. Here you go. And plus, this jar has the Wallen, Wallfriend cream, 
uh, which we got once you got hurt or something happened. So you can just apply that because sometime wheelchair uh, hit on your feet, no matter how careful you are, and it's hurting a lot. So right then and there, it's happened to someone and we put it like a little bit of this and she feel comfortable because we cannot go back to the hotel and wait for a few hours to going back. We because are we just had, we had just started our study. Yeah, we just started That's our study and somebody rolled over my feet. So I'm going to mark that uh, with the like uh, Walter gel up there. And this is the diaper rashing cream. Uh, the diaper rashing cream, you can get it. And that diaper rashing cream is ended up, uh, you are using it. Or if you got any, rash, any rashes under your uh, feet or uh, your thighs area, it's so, sometimes. Uh, yeah, let me just explain this to you. Men get the rash right away. Keep in mind, they have nothing on them. They are literally just two pieces of yes. towel, no underwear, nothing. Their rash starts right away. But women are wearing undergarments and pants. Your rash, depending on everybody's different, your rash may take a day or two to start, or maybe it'll start, you know, um, two, three days later, maybe at Mina. And where does it happen? Thighs. Your thighs rub again. It's rubbing. And it's getting sweaty sometimes. So make sure leaving, once you are leaving your hotel, no matter what, don't worry about your pants or anything. Just apply this underneath there. And every time once you're using the washroom, apply it before you will start getting the rashes. rashes yeah. That's the best idea. So this is like I stick it in the, my backpack and I put it in. That's all time in my backpack. Here I come with the an other bag. Right. Just here. And that bag has the bandage, bandage. Yeah. the blister bandage, and some extra bandage, and the polysoprene. I put the polysoprene uh, the, in this jar because the tube of the polysoprene, if you are put it in a tube, it's going to be melt off. You're talking about this, the polysporine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the one. I have okay. over there. In this, because this tube has a very oily texture. So what will happen in Makkah? I have luckily have this in my backpack. So that tube get melt off and it's in my uh, Ziploc bag. So I yeah. pour it in there and I kept it there. And that's how I ended up using all the time. Because sometimes like you got the cut or something happened. So you always keep this and you can give, uh, give this to someone. If you find someone is hurting their feet or something happened. Get the subscribe area for that doing. You're definitely going to find somebody. Yes. So this is <laughs> another thing hanging in my backpack. So let me show you one more thing. Here are the, my portable mobile charger. Because I'm using my mobile so much. So that is the charger. And that is here we go the plug. So it's also hanging up with the help of the safety pen. And here we go. So it's all time hanging. No matter I am where am I. I will always keep this uh, mobile charger in my backpack because the mobile is the most important thing over there. So the third bag, I'm not going to show you the third bag here right now. Just give me one second. So this is all. And here, the white bag. So don't try to put the so many wipes in the white bags. Only 10, 5 is enough for a day. Okay. Because you have your white bag and your toiletry bag too. You don't need a yeah. lot. So or, I, or if you decided not to keep this one, so you can keep like the flushable wipes. We, we use this flushable wipe to wipe off our face. Uh, why we wipe off our face? Because this, no matter which sunblock are you are using, all sunblock has a water resistance quality. So you have to, before refreshing your wazoo, you have to clean up very, very nicely. So make sure your wazoo is done properly. So I am going to keep this inside my backpack right now. Okay, and and here I go. Uh, I will keep like a few of my panty liners inside my backpack on the on the back zip. Okay, two of them. Um, Alina, I don't know what back cream you're referring to, but one was uh, which I I have no idea which cream you're referring to at this point. But one was uh, the Waltron gel. One was the Polysporin. Uh, you know, in case we get hurt. Yes. And here's my pen. Right now I am going to perform the Umrah. Okay. So I am not keeping this pen with me because I'm going in the time of the Asr. So you have to pick your own time for performing the Umrah. So I am going in the time of Asr for right now I am making my back for going for the Umrah. First time I'm entering into the Haram. This is in part of my backpack. Okay. The Vaseline roll on. And now I have to keep this water bottle the spray mist water bottle i'll keep it in my backpack and the indoor shoes and i'll, I'll show you. and my my dua book 
always. Dua book is in my backpack. Let me show you. My dua book goes here inside. Okay. Here's my water bottle. Here's my dua book. And that's my indoor, indoor shoes. Let me show you. This is so I know you guys are thinking she's putting in so many things. But keep in mind, we only put tiny, tiny things. The bag is still light. Yes. It's not heavy. And um, yesterday I got the advice with the um, with the in the light of the imam's uh, knowledge. So you can keep your uh, shoe and your dua book, even the Quran, together as long as your dua book and your uh, slippers are a, be a separate part, or, or your slipper should be at down bottom, and your dua book and the Quran is on the top. So my uh, dua book is on the side. There's uh, so many stuff, and uh, the dua book is separate from this. Okay. So, and, and you have to put in the separate backpack. So your Quran and do your dua book is not the part of your slippers, slip-ons or anything. Okay. Like she, she wrapped it in a plastic this, this is all I needed to go for the Umrah. Um, and sorry, let me show you. This, this bag, I'm going, if once, even though once I'm performing the Umrah, so this bag has my mobile phone up there. And this bag will have my credit card in here and my hotel key card, okay? And some uh, money, the cash money inside here. And I'm going to hang this backpack every time in here because my mobile is, should be in my front. And we did it all the time, even though in the rush and the crowd, none of the rope gets stuck to someone or anything happened. Alhamdulillah, we'll be perfectly fine. And let me show you how I'm going to hang up this backpack on my back. It's very light. It has a water bottle that's really light and it looked big. The backpack wasn't heavy at all. Sorry. Here you go. Are you able to see it, someone? Yep. Yep. All okay. good. That's all. If I have uh, sanitizer or anything to do it, I'll use this right now because my sanitizer bottle says sanitizer and my soap bottle says soap. So no matter what you use it. Okay? What, about your, what about your hat? Uh, because I'm going for the Umrah right now. Uh, I don't think so because I picked the time between the Asar and Maghrib. So I'm not keeping my umbrella or anything. So I'm wearing my hat. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Because there's only Where? sunlight. Uh, because she's going at Asar, sunlight is eventually going to go away. Right. But it's still, this is Middle East. The sunlight is there even at Asar. Yes. Uh, however, if you're somebody who doesn't like wearing hats because it gives you a headache, then don't keep the hat. Just carry the umbrella. Don't do, don't take both things. Okay. No, you don't have to put your backpack in the front. And here, sorry, I forget to put one thing. That's our Janamas. A praying mat. We'll keep this praying mat all the time inside our backpack. Because, uh, but you do, uh, we ended up not to use it because we our hijab is so big. Some can you do that, the hijab thingy right now? The people can I, see it. Please. I don't have that hijab with me. I could try to do it with my other Salah. Um, okay. We'll show you. Uh, uh, so this is all we needed. So once I enter into the haram, I'll quickly... As soon as I find the spot, I'll put my uh, Tiva hiking sandal inside and take this out. Okay. And I'll grab my water bottle in my hand if you want to drink it. Or I'll grab my Dua book. During the Tawaf, my water bottle is inside my backpack. I'm not going to drink the water. I decided. And I put my uh, Tiva hiking sandal back in. And now we enter into the Mataf area. And that backpack is hanging on my behind behind on my back and my dua book is in my hand because I read my dua book so many times so I know which page has which. So you can put the stickers on, on the the highlighter stickers on the top and mark it your dua book. This page says this, this page says this. So once you are doing the tawab, don't worry about this. Like somebody gonna stop up to you or something happened to you. So sometime I was looking into the, my dua book and reading and reciting something. Sometime I'm not looking it into my dua book. So, but once I'm doing the tawaf, so all the time that my dua book's in, in my hand, that's my own personal, per, personal preference, but you can choose whatever way you would like to do it. So that's how like I'll keep the track of all my duas and I'm able to um, make my all the duas here. I'm going to show you my dua books, which I give you the printable paper. So I keep it everything like this. So my, uh, the dua for my uh, sahi area, 
the Safa and Marwa Mountains, the dua for the Arpat, and I hear the name of the people who I need to make a dua for them. So I make I make my dua book such a organ in a such an organized way. For example, the deceased people who has been passed away, the all the family members' names underneath there. And even though once I was doing tawaf, I was reading this dua and I name all the persons. And if somebody give me this uh, the dua request, I can also make their dua. Uh, once, once my dua books in my hand for the seven round the whole book has been done because it has been organized alhamdulillah very properly and i have been reciting this dua books for so many times now the time to go to the sahi area once you enter into the sahi area you have to read the dua on the mountain of safa uh, and uh, then you will start walking towards it and once you are doing your sahi you have to um, memorize recall your memories what the uh, bibi hajra did it in this ground and how the memories of all the time of the ibrahim alayhi salam and start making a dua for everyone and reciting your book as much as possible and making so many duas and once you are done with the seven round before doing the seven round your feet get tired because first time you are kick up on the marble floor on your feet directly to the mataf area your feet get tired don't worry about this as much as possible pour the zamzam water every corner has a zamzam cooler and that's how our feet feel so relieved uh, with the cold zamzam water because you know the zamzam has the quality of so many cures here, someone will show you our praying mat. Why we don't ended up using the praying mat? Oh, <laughs> we did <laughs> not as much. But uh, this is to answer whose question is this? Anisa. Okay, so Anisa, this is look. This is my normal what you call shawl, or in South Asian countries you call dupatta, right? Okay. This this was the size of our dupatta. What we did, we had it sewn. So from here all the way till to the bottom. I had it sewn. Yes. So when I had it sewn. Like a slip-on hijab. The long slip-on yeah. hijab. So all I had to do was, it was sewn. Like literally, see this? Yes, we was... will come to your answer. It was sewn like this. So you, if I can, I, here, let me just show you how further down it went, right? And the dupatta I had was even bigger than this. So this is coming all the way down to my, below my knees. The one I had was even bigger. It went, came down all mid-calf. So we so we we sewed it all the way till the bottom all i had to do every day was take it up and put it on and that's why the bag that you're talking about wearing inside your abaya you're right somebody can cut it off it is makkah but the shaitan's still there okay but um <laughs> alhamdulillah somebody, nothing happened somebody can cut it off but mine was hidden inside and asya alhamdulillah didn't have a bad experience with it right it, there's always the there's always a test like Asya said. Alhamdulillah, no one cut ours off. Mine was hiding actually at all times because it was underneath this huge gigantic hijab. And because of this huge gigantic hijab, I didn't need the salam. Uh, mine is also underneath that hijab, Saman. <laughs> oh, yours was also underneath the hijab. Yeah, and because I went to the side the slip on hijab. Yeah, and the reason we didn't need, I mean, we had the salam act. We always had it, but the reason I never need to use mine, this was so big. My hands were inside. I would just put. I would just you know, I yeah. would go on the floor. I would just put my head on this. Okay, that's one question. Um, and that's the thing. Okay, now two people two people asked me this. Sh Shamila is asking. Shamila is asking. Do you wear sandals during Sahih? And somebody asked, um, yes. should, we, should we, we be barefoot in Haram? Now here's the thing: Is it a Hajj requirement for you to be barefoot? No. Why do we think we should be barefoot? Because in our head, it's the Masjid. So keep in mind, the Kaaba or the our area around the Kaaba. We don't consider it as a masjid because if we did, listen, the cops that are standing there, they have shoes on. The janitors Even that are the there. cop, it's hanging on the hachi aswad, he put one of his shoe on the hachi aswad, side of the hachi aswad. All the workers has their uh, shoes and they are wearing it indoor and outdoor the same. So if it was the masjid, then we wouldn't, then it would be equal for the cops and the ones cleaning. So out of respect, because we are still thinking, no, we're going inside the haram, we keep an indoor clean and because they're also cleaning out of respect for them as well and the public that we're going with. We kept separate indoor shoes so we can wear them around Tawaf and the Sahi. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 Makkah is, the Haram area is that. The Masjid itself is really big. Now you can walk to the other end and go into the Masjid. They're going to ask you to take your shoes off because that's the Masjid area. They have carpets there. Okay. So they will ask you to take your shoes off. Over there, we we took our shoes off. We carried in our hands and we went to the masjid area, bare feet. But there was carpets over there. Uh, and we, we walked a little bit on the marble floor. And but got in the, the hush time, you will find the carpet in a very, very small spots. 
Very few. No, that's part of it. Like this is Mataab the Kaaba. Mataab doesn't has. Yeah, like this is, the, this is the Kaaba area. And then further off, the extended new parts of the Haram, that's the masjid area. That's where you find the carpets. That's it. Not many areas, right? No, you don't. Uh, Saira is asking about the, you have a two pairs of in your backpack, the shoes. No, we have one indoor slippers in our backpack and one we're wearing uh, on our feet. When we enter the Haram, when we enter, when we are entering the Haram, we take off our backpack and uh, we take out our slippers, put on our indoor slippers and take put our outdoor slippers inside the backpack. That's all. You just switch That's it. All. Okay, so you will find many people who tell you that, oh my God, why are you wearing shoes inside? Everybody follows their own thoughts. So you, uh, the once you are, sorry, uh, Saman, I'm cutting off like because it's a little bit confusing. So once you are praying, you are indoor uh, shoes. What we used to do, we put our indoor shoes here, like just on underneath our backpack and we are praying in front of it. Yeah, like we took it off and we just, yeah, we just took yeah. our shoes, slippers off, put our backpack on top and we're praying there. Yeah, but yeah. you're not doing your tawaf and sahih. You, in between that, you're only doing two uh, uh, sunnahs. You're not, there's not a lot of prayer unless salah happens, right? So you just, if it sound a little bit uh, chaotic right now, but trust us, like this, we did it all the time in the Hajj and Alhamdulillah, it will be fine. Don't worry about this because we put the, once we are praying, we put our uh, indoor shoes underneath this. And some people, even though you saw it, they are praying with uh, their indoor shoes on too. That's perfectly fine. Also. Nani, you're planning to wear all... Uh, okay, we already answered that, right? Athletic shoes. Uh, and let me really make burns this up. A Previous judge told us not to wear running shoes because when you water your shoes, it can get... you're gonna Your feet are going to feel really, really hot and get sweaty. If you try to water your shoes and put those shoes on, uh, water your feet and then put those shoes on, they're going to start stinking. So everybody, I wanted to wear running shoes too. I was like, oh, I have my running shoes. I'm going to wear them. Everybody, like I can't begin to know, count the number of people who told me, do not wear running shoes. Okay, now my uh, Umrah is done. Now I have to like go back to hotel and everything is done. Now I have to come back next day without a Umrah planning. I'm coming to a Haram and staying in a Haram for a long time. So what I'm going to supposed to put inside my backpack more. So I saw you guys a few stuff. Now I'm going to put the, my umbrella inside my backpack. The same backpack has a, 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 which has everything. Now I'm going for the time of the Zohar and between the Asar. I don't know where I'll get the spot. So I'll keep my fan inside my back. If I need it, I'll take this out. And for the purpose of eating, like as I we told you, like we are the fruit lovers. So we need to eat like something. So we pick the banana. Why? Because that banana... Uh, that banana is like uh, make your stomach pull up for a longer time period so we keep it in this and we keep this even though inside our back that's all and, and this, this, is, this is the small pillow if you are planning to spend the whole day in a haram keep it inside your backpack if you feel like a sleeping somewhere in a haram just blow it and sleep underneath it you're not going to need the pillow for Arafat because they already provide you beds and pillow. But for Muzalfa, if you you're going to need it, so just so in this backpack it has everything. And now I have to spend the night of Muzalfa. And what do I have to do now? So I'm going to put my toothpaste and toothbrush in this backpack with the help of the pins. I'm hanging it here. I have two bottles of electrolyte inside my backpack, and this is all. That's the all you needed for the night of the Muzalfa and the day of the Arafat. The day of the Arafat and the night of the Muzalfa, I don't need for the night of the Muzalfa and the day of the Arafat my indoor sandals. So my back, the indoor sandals are out. My backpack is completely free. I am going to keep some of my snacks inside in the Ziploc bag, which will be like a dates or a dry fruits or someone's is there any other suggestion for the no it's too hot just keep what you have yes that's and Arafat, they're, they're going to provide you constant snacking at Arafat don't worry about it yes inshallah and this bottle that it's you will find everywhere it's in your hand because in this bottle with the help of this bottle you will be keep drinking your electrolytes because the bottle inside your backpack it's very very useful for uh for your vazu for your drinking of the water regular water yeah. yeah but if you don't wanna like if you are done drinking with this just throw it you will find this bottle everywhere everywhere 
So don't worry about it. Like, let me keep it. If I won't find it now, no, you will find it. This bottle is everywhere. So keep this, your bottle in your hand for the day of Arafat and the night of the Muzalfa. That's it. Now I am ready to go for the night of day of Arafa and the night of Muzalfa. That's all I am done with my packing. Nothing else in my backpack. As you able to see how, how big is my backpack look like? Is it like easy to carry? Try to be pack yourself light, light, light again and again because you will be get tired. Because Asia opened up things from her toiletry kit like panty liner, brush and everything and she put it in that backpack. What yeah, I did when I put it like, uh, sorry, I need to put like a one glove inside my backpack. Let me put it on because... Uh, then the people get confused. Why? Yeah, I I just I didn't empty out my I didn't empty out uh, my toilet uh, kit. I just looked at, like I just I just stuffed the whole thing in my backpack. Okay. Um. Somebody asked, how do I hang my? Somebody up further up asked. Let me see. How do I need? How do I hang my toiletry kit on the door? Oh, where, so where do you put the shampoo, soap, in in the washroom and showering? Avoid avoid going through shampoos. Okay. It's unnecessary stuff you have to carry. But in case you do, your hotel room has proper washrooms. My ass, sorry, I need to, to tell you like my ass hook, like just like the summon ass hook always inside my backpack here in in underneath in this pocket. Yeah, so Asi had a nicer, smaller ass hook. Mine was kind of big. Okay, so I always had it in here. I would hang it here Um, to who's asking, Saira. Saira, this is my soap. Okay. And if you, re I didn't want to shampoo, but if you really want to shampoo, um, yeah, it's you can put it inside. You know, you're clean, right? Your hands are clean. Take it out. Take your shampoo. Wash, wash, wash. Put it back in. This, this is, is my ass hook. Yeah, she had a tiny ass hook. It's in my inside my backpack. So this is plastic. It really didn't bother me if it got wet from the inside. It's a shampoo. Shampoo. Put it back in. That's it. I put my shampoo, my conditioner, everything inside if you need it. Obviously, you don't. But my For example, soap. this is a door. You just have to put this here. And then you have to hang your backpack like this. Yeah. And go to the washroom because there's nobody standing outside in the washroom to grab your backpack. Okay. So this is like, uh, this is the, this is a backpack. Uh, let me unpack it, then show you one more time. Then you will be more clear about the backpack, what we have to put it and what we not to put it. Okay. For example, this is a backpack for the day of Arafa and the night of Muzalfa. You need this backpack for the day of Arafa and the night of Muzalfa. Your sanitizer, hand soap. Someone, can you repeat it? Your sanitizer, hand soap, always hanging on the outside to side up. Take a look because you can put the soap, shampoo and everything inside, but the soap needs to be outside. Okay. You need Summon to this clip we put it for our heads. Okay. You can put your hat or I also hung my water bottle on it. Yeah. Because I had my hat on my head. I hung my water bottle on it many times. It's very light. The water bottle is very light. I didn't take the metal water, bo water bottle. It's too heavy. The metal Yeah. Bottle. The one we show you guys, like the small water bottle. The water bottle with the mist, so that's, that bottle water has the hanging on the side. Able to see one more time, okay? So soap, hand sanitizer, and the other clip for whatever you need, okay? You can even hang your hat, or you can if you have you have a foldable hat, so you can put it inside your backpack, okay? So any of the head, whatever you wants to use. Or if you decided to use umbrella only, don't keep the head then. And let me open the back zip of my backpack and show you the stuff one more time. For the night of Muzalfa and the uh, uh, day of Arfa and the night of Muzalfa, I don't need this. But I keep it because it's not taking any space in my backpack. I have few panty liners. Again, like I have the tissue tablets. I have my sunglasses because I I need the sunglasses. The sunglasses is very important, Saman. Why? It hurts your eyes, dude. It's sunny out there. Yeah. That's the awesome. S hook where I wherever I need to go, I have to keep my I take my backpack. Here is my electrolyte. I have always lights bottle. Those plastic water bottles that you're getting at every corner, people are handing out for sadhaka. Uh, grab them. You need your electrolyte all the time. Somebody asked about uh, drinks for immunity. Electrolyte drinks, you need them, need them, need them. At least five to seven bottles, I would suggest you to must drink rest of the and rest of the part for the water. Uh, you can get it from the Walmart. 
it says electrolytes and check the uh, uh, YouTube slide link. And over there, you will be able to see. And other thing, like the lotion, uh, you really don't need it for the night day of Arafat and the night of Muzalpa. But I keep it, so I keep it all the time. And any other important stuff which you think is important. So I get the blister on my uh, on my lips, so I need this, so I keep it for my own preference. But you can keep it whatever you need it. For the night, uh, for the day of Arafa and the night of Muzalpa, I kept two of them. One, not the one, two of them. Okay. And let me pack it here and close the zip and then I'll go inside my bag. So she has, keep in mind, she has the main stuff from the toiletry kit. The gloves, um, the panty liners and the hook and the soap. Okay. She has those two, three main things. The gloves, the panty liners, the soap and the hook. Okay. There is the gloves. And the gloves things. you can only use in the purpose of uh, uh, picking up the Muslim shower from the washroom or dirt. If it's really neat. If you use it for rather than uh, any other stuff, you have to pay the hadiya. Hadiya yeah. and adam. You cannot wear that gloves to picking up the stone from the jaw from the muzalpa. You don't have to. Okay. Uh, we use I, sometimes the Muslim shower has fallen inside all the way inside the toilet. So it obviously feels disgusting. So if you wear the glove, take it out, throw the glove away. Otherwise, you shouldn't be wearing gloves. And then throw it. That's perfectly fine. Let's go inside my backpack again, one more time. Again. Here I open my backpack for uh for the day of Arafa and the night of Muzalpa. Polysophrine, few bandage, even though the blister bandage inside my backpack, hanging with the help of uh that baby pin. Inshallah, you don't need it, but just in case. My uh, toothpaste and my toothbrush. Okay. And all my medication. If uh, you have a migraine or any other condition, keep that medication. Someone, what did she say? Sorry, I didn't hear. Why do we need the gloves? Okay, again, why do we need the gloves? Um, sometimes the Muslim shower pipe is fallen inside the toilet. Okay? Inside the toilet. Inside. And there's a huge lineup. If you spill yucky and go out from the washroom, then there's the, another hour of the wait. for wait. So you have this in your backpack. It's hanging. You're like, oh, okay. So, you know, you just... Uh, and you're about... Obviously, as soon as you enter the washroom, you're going to see. You're like, ew, this is disgusting. So first, you're going to wear your glove, pick up the pipe, put the Wash pipe it, on the side. And throw it. And get rid of your glove, right? Because Okay, should... here are my wipe, wipes. Okay. And this, I'm going to use it for so many other purposes. The umbrella. Okay. And um, the banana case. Like to keep my banana or any other food if you want to keep it. My pillow. That pillow will help me if like people are lining up to get the pillow from the agencies and the other stuff. I don't need to wait up. I'm going to blow this and put my head down because I'm getting really tired at that night. I, I was really tired. So we don't worry about like a pillow and this and that and lining up and we slap. Okay. So that pillow is my in my backpack for all time. I'm going to use that pillow in the night of Muzalpa. Might going to use it. Okay. So I, I'm going to suggest you use that and dry that up ending up in the lineup. My dua book or my Quran, whatever you want to keep it. That is my dua book. Okay. In my backpack, that is like my mobile charger. I didn't use the bidet. Uh, someone used it, so someone kept it just like this. You can keep it inside. Okay. You're I ready. didn't take the bidet to Muzalfa and Arafat. You didn't take it. I okay. didn't take the bidet. Yeah, yeah. My I'm fan. Sure. This is my fan, and this is my praying mat. I might need to put my praying mat on the ground to sleep on the night of Muzalfa. Why? Because if you have a th little bit thicker praying mat, that's also fine. It has a magnet on the four corner, so it's not going to fly over. So I'm going to put this if the people are lining up for their bedding or something. Or there is a car, there is always a little bit of the, we got the carpeting area. So we don't need to worry about this praying mat either in the night. You're, you're going to be too tired. Yeah, you're we just blow this and we sleep it on this. Okay. And here are my fan again, which make me feel cool. Once I put the spray underneath this it comes up a little bit of the mist okay so i kept this inside my backpack and um there's a few dates or our dry fruits back and whatever you want to eat it that all for the night uh, day of arafa and the night of Muzal. 
I don't need any sandals and any uh, flip flop for that day because I'm wearing my Tiva hiking sandal. That's all. And and this backpack is just hanging here. Just like this, in this backpack, have a few money. Make sure you have a money for the night of Muzalpa. Because if you lost somewhere, you are ending up somewhere. So you have you have to have something. So I kept my credit card in there. Um, and I kept my uh, like a few cash in there for the night of Muzalpa. And I kept like a few panty liners here. And I kept my mobile phone all the time in here. Make yeah. sure you also charge your phone. Um, yes. So we have a portable charger too. So that's all. So th uh, that's done for, uh, I'm done with and done for the day of Arpa and the night of Mazalpa. I don't need to carry any other stuff. You are seeing the people, they have a big bag. Why you have a small bag? Don't worry about this. You are good to go. Alhamdulillah. An Anissa, your question. So we take the duffel bag to Mina and in, and is this backpack just in our duffel bag? This backpack is your everyday backpack. Okay. Yeah, you, okay. Need to, you may need to add or subtract one or two things. So, I mean, I had my duffel bag and I had my backpack at all times. A uh, duffel bag was, you know, it would put in, it was put into the bus luggage. My backpack was like, oh, my water, my chapstick. So I always have it on my back. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and I also kept this toiletry bag in uh, just like the summon, uh, keep it in there. So I keep this in my Mina backpack. I, I kept this uh, flushable wipes and shampoo, body wash. My conditioner uh, and my floss and uh, my face wash. <laughs> Here you go. And I might burn. Saira, when you go to the washroom in Mina, you need to just, you see this plastic bag with your toiletry kit? Literally, don't try to take things out and take carry things in your hand. Pick up this backpack, just go. Hang this on the door and you have your soap here. So if you're going to the toilet, you just get up, you know, yeah. put your pants on and wash your hands with the, the soap. But other than that, whatever you need is in here. Shampoo is in here. Everything is in here. Unless you're going to shower, you might need clothes. That's it. You know? Yeah. You because to keep your we have our um, hand wash here. So then we can don't have to dig in and make the whole bath dirty. These toiletry bags, uh, we have we put a link for Amazon. Mine is actually, you know how when we buy bed sheets, they keep in those plastic bags? This is what that bag is. When we buy bed sheets, they're in, in plastic bags, right? This is what the bag is. It's just a normal see-through plastic bag, okay? So this backpack, I didn't take it. Uh, I kept it in the mina and I leaped it over there and I keep this backpack with me for all the time, everywhere, except my toothbrush and toothpaste. I don't need to use it for everyday use. So my toothbrush and toothpaste comes back into this toiletry bag once I'll be returning to the mina. Okay, and this backpack is always here. If you want to keep the brush or a comb or anything for you, you can keep it. So, I mean, I will let you know which hand soap we used. I don't remember. We sorry, had to sorry, 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 sorry. The most important thing, my sunblock. Sorry, that sunblock has to be inside my backpack for all time. Yeah, you're going to burn. I didn't put my sunblock in the these bottle. That that backpack is belong to my mother-in-law. She's going for the hush. So she found this way more easy. So I kept for her in this bottle. So I kept my sunblock all the time in my this small pocket. This small pocket, I told you, that is a magical pocket. It has like a really big ending. It goes in, as you're able to see. Uh, Omnia, you asked for sandals that we can recommend that are not that expensive. Honestly, anything that you can hike in. Um, We got those sandals because we were thinking we we're spending so much money on Hajj. I don't want to have my broken feet there. Your like my feet, feet has hurt. to be all time comfortable. Yeah, they have to be comfortable. So my feet hurt. So I don't want to take the risk. But honestly, I don't know. Maybe others can recommend something for you. Any sandals that you currently use for hiking that you're comfortable walking in without blisters, you don't get anything, take those. Any sandals that if you're buying, every, anybody who's buying new sandals, start walking in them. Your feet has to be broken into those sandals. Um. Uh, our imam said like for the toothpaste you don't need to worry about that he said like um, you have to look for this tiny matters and on his advice we will go with the normal toothpaste if you want to use it like uh, any other toothpaste like, that's your own personal preference and choice and ask your imam or sheikh uh, who am, whoever you are following and the reason he said that he's like you're going to eat food that also has smell in it so you're not really you know if the mouth the toothpaste smell is not going to be there all the time um and who wait hold on somebody asked do we use regular sanitizer with alcohol ask your imam ask who you follow okay the our imam said uh that for us for uh, for us it's okay because 
honestly, we used our hand soap. We didn't really use the hand sanitizer as much. We used our hand soap mainly. Um, and so, um, but ask your imam what he thinks. He, our imam said, take it with you and use it just in case. Okay. So I have this uh, big bag, uh, like this big backpack people are asking uh, two days ago about like the traveling. So this big backpack, I kept my, um, like the, my indoor uh, flip-flop in this backpack and all the things which is like in this tiny bottles because it's less than a hundred ml. For but Mina? Uh, yeah, in the, uh, not for Mina, for the airport. I keep it inside. But why? Because in case if our suitcase are not ending up there, so we have the most essential days stuff with us. Okay. And this bag is goes in my hand carry exactly like this. Okay. And um, this bag, I found it on the old navy. It's just a $19 backpack. You can find it on the old navy. Okay. Sorry, Khadi, I don't know what you mean by hurdle to clean the bathroom. Uh I, I have no idea what a hurdle is. Uh, uh, so I'm terribly sorry. You don't worry about cleaning the bathroom, inshallah, they'll be clean, but sometimes they're not. And that's what that's what hashar is like. Nothing is clean. Everything and, is messy, so just Yeah. Let me show your nose and deal with in it. The, in the Mina backpack with some in the uh, just look over for that because I have that so I have this in my Mina backpack. What is this? The sewing kit? Yeah, I have that sewing kit in my backpack because in case like if something happened, like something rip or something, so I can use this. I got it this from our dollar store and I kept it in my mina bag. So you can see we travel together, but we have completely separate natures. I am very easygoing. I don't carry much stuff. I'm but I, I am with someone, so someone don't need to worry about the sewing kit and all these stuff. That, but, that's true too, but uh, even if she wasn't with me, I wouldn't be carrying it. Mother nature friend is with her all the time like i have to yeah, alhamdulillah alhamdulillah she was with me at all time uh, but just by nature like i just don't worry about all this stuff right my thing is we'll see what happens when it happens like how bad can something rip right so that's just my nature that's and this is her nature she likes to prepare have have a lot of in case things um so if you're like that and like you asked first. about Taya, you asked about giving us giving you some idea about packing the hand carry so here's the thing your hand carry weight by airlines is usually what seven kg, ten kg on the airline. Okay. Based on that, pack as many clothes as you can. Okay. Your husband has his own hand carry. Pack the ihram and the clothes. Okay. A gray bag will be going a hand carry must. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so the backpack is empty when you're putting it in the hand carry. Okay. And pack mm -hmm. your indoor shoes. Uh, pack uh, small bottles of the soap and the shampoo if needed. Saman, uh, sorry, I'm cutting you off. Saman, we are wearing our hiking sandal for airport, remember? So we wore them, yes. Yeah, all the time. I'm not with the indoor. We don't have like a two, three pairs. We have one flip-flop sandal and one yeah, Tiva flip-flop is enough. Uh, sorry, we're Tiva hiking sandal and one flip-flop of the Clark is enough. We don't worry about that. By any other, I carried my I carried my indoor shoes inside my hand carry, and I was wearing my uh my my hiking sandals that I would wear all around Makkah. I wore them on my feet when I was going to the airport. So basically, you you up up till ten or seven kg, whatever you're allowed, pack <laughs> as much as you can and a bit of everything that you may need. That's it. Yes, and what else we have the question? Uh, need the more located and the far camp so we'll be walking four kilometer each day uh are you guys in the al moisture camps and which camp are you in yes we are so al moisture camp to the jamarat and coming back from there it's not four uh, they are giving you the estimate of the four it's 10 kilometer 10 to 12 kilometer and a few times we lost so we couldn't be able to find the camp so it's ended up uh, 16 kilometer. Our watch is saying this. And we are like, oh, is it right or wrong? Did we walk that much? Yeah, we, we ended up that much. Don't worry about uh, it, but you will be able to do it. And as far as washroom goes, just go to any camp. And there's so many camps coming in the way. Just step into the camp and go to the washroom if you really need to go. Yes. But trust me, you don't, you don't feel. <laughs> you will not need to. It's so hot. So I have major bladder issues. I feel like I have to go to the washroom every time. But in the Middle East, I didn't need to because I was so dehydrated. Whatever I was, whatever I was drinking, my body was using. Okay. Yeah, I kept my full backpack uh, like this. Um, but not like a, um, put the stuff inside, inside the by hand carry. I adjust it the way it should be. Uh, and I keep it in my hand carry. I, I keep this bag 
and my this uh, this goes in my hand carry and this bag has all my toiletry kits and everything and just for let you know some of you are able to might be ended up going from the london london area so the custom in london is very strict don't worry about this they are not going to throw something but there that's their way to check it they will open each and every bottle of yours and your husband going to look at you why you put it this and they put the step in and they are testing it and they are looking at you and don't wear don't feel panic just read your duas and that time we are reading in the live in the live rajoon they did that to you i don't know why i don't know why they didn't do it to us um i'm going to tell you uh journey fi musibata khlafli khairum minha and we'll be able to pass out from that custom that custom is ended up for a very long time in only in the london airport uh and why they did it because we have so many liquid and the medication in my backpack so of course they have to test and check it and that's their journal process don't worry about this so i think tahia means to ask that did you pack your backpack and then put it in i think that's what tahia no, means no i didn't pack i i kept uh, each and everything <clears throat> because the, the most of the stuff inside my backpack it will goes in there the little stuff okay and uh, for the airport are we allowed to carry 7 kg carry on we are going to have to check saudi airlines we don't know those things can constantly change so yes you do have a carry on and you have your own personal carry which is your your personal ba- bag the which is your purse uh, but you have to check saudi airlines i wouldn't be able to answer that if it's 7 kg someone i carry the hand carry in this bag like yeah, yeah. your personal <laughs> purse for the purse is fine your your personal purse which is which can be that big yes and your uh hand carry uh, so you know th- you are allowed those two things on all airlines i just don't know the weight yes. it changes every year so once you are getting your hand carry so <clears throat> get the lightest one and then you can keep like most of your stuff are the uh, hand sanitizer without alcohol is sort of it's impossible it's like, yeah impossible what what that's it? again like go answer goes to our sheikh and imam he said to us like you can if there's no alcohol in this then they, it's not the purpose of using of the sanitizer so on his advice we'll kept that sanitizer the regular one not the smell but one. we use the soap more we barely use the sanitizer because yes. i i at least barely did because i was like soap there's water everywhere okay um somebody asked i missed that question but i saw it earlier when we put water on our feet in the haram doesn't everything get wet you will see everybody standing by the water coolers and pouring water on their feet that area is wet the water just drains don't do it in and the middle there is a, like a drainage down bottom there there is a drainage and on the top of the drainage you are standing that drainage look like a floor but once you are pouring it will goes and people are constantly the worker are wiping that area you are not coming with a wet floor on the floor of the haram um yeah hopefully that helps so remember pack your carry with a bit of everything and you should be fine it really depends person to person right this is just us yes is there any more question any other questions you guys it's survival anything that in inshallah khair everything goes well but should anything not go according to your plan remember this is hashar this is survival to survive right this is not as this is not exactly the day of judgment but this is supposed to give give you the idea of the chaos and day of judgment will be god knows what oh, only allah knows <laughs> so you know um uh, just carry <laughs> carry your own towel if you're nice we were we were kind of being mean and we kind of took the no we towel. didn't carry our own towels uh and uh, that's all we have like uh, don't worry about uh, about these stuff once inshallah you will be come back from the hajj and uh, you will be call yourself a hajjaj you will be remembering these days and us and you will have your own beautiful stories uh, the spiritual stories about the hajj you will forget about all of these like, hajj essential and all these stuff it will be like a very tiny matters for you so big dua that you stay healthy all throughout the day of arafat you don't want to yeah. get sick that day and miss the hajj main thing which is arafat okay just keep on making that dua make that dua that day of arafat goes easy for you and everything we didn't bother i honestly didn't bother with your but if you bother you can keep it in your mina backpack or mina we didn't i had it for my hotel room but i didn't have it for mina i didn't so the undergarment we use in the like uh, for example uh, um, the undergarment we use in the mina we throw them like 
the part of like the underwears and all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you really are, problem. you know, and if you want to bring them, sure, keep uh, have a plastic bag, put it in. We didn't break. wash anything in Amena. We didn't bother. People do. You will see a lot of people doing laundry. We didn't bother with it. Yes, we didn't bother it, and we didn't use it. Uh, spend your time most of the time and you will see the people are chit chatting in Mena. don't waste your time you didn't spend thousands of dollars for chit chat and making a friend over there you spend that money to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoy your days of Hajj and spend each and every minute in the ibadah then you won't feel regret once you come back oh I forget to do this oh I forget to do that um, there was a like a very, 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 very beautiful days of your life, inshallah, going to be a very beautiful days and memorial days of your life. You will have that stories forever like a green in your mind, even though you keep getting older and older. And once people are going for the hush next year, you will keep asking them, like, can uh, can you tell us like, how's that? Like what you want to ask them? There's nothing. There's a floor buildings and that's all. That is like the some special connection between the land and you. And Afsha, oh sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Afsha, you're asking about how to cut, who can cut your hair. Okay, so you're done your main uh, hajj rokuns, right? Three things, right? Um, you're done your sahi, you're done, you're done your rami, your sahi, and oh, your tawaf, and uh, your qurbani is done, right? Now, the best thing is, so somebody in ihram cannot cut your hair. So the men get their head shaved, right? Because there are a bunch of shavers standing out everywhere uh, at the hotel and whatever. So men get their hair shaved. Now, whoever you're gone with, your mehram, uh, your mehram, once their head is shaved, they're not in ihram anymore. So now they can cut your hair. They cut your hair. Once they're done yours, you're out of, you're free of ihram as well. Now you can cut your, any other sister's hair because you're out of ihram. The whole point is somebody in ihram cannot cut your hair. Yes. And um, there is a one more question about something. When you take a bath in Mina, when you change clothes, it does not affect your ihram. No, it doesn't because as a woman, you can keep on, you know, whatever you wear is your ihram. But that's the whole point of Mina. It's survival. Don't try to change your clothes all the time. No, you don't have to carry any bath sheet. Don't make... No, no. no you guys, no, this is survival. No. <laughs> don't, you're not going on vacation. This is survival. No bath sheet. No survival bad for Allah surviving. Allah. You're, uh, what's the point of carrying a bed sheet it's so it gets really tight the beds are this much literally it's almost like you're in your grave okay yes it's almost like you're on and your grave you cannot cut your own hair hair because you're in ihram you can't cut your hair somebody without ihram somebody who's not in ihram can cut your hair for the days of pinna you have to keep only two for the five days because the one day you will go to the hotel and shower yourself and change your clothes over there so one you are wearing one, you will change in your hotel and two, you have. And you have total five days in Mina. That's all. It's enough. It's well, after I asked about cutting your hair after Umrah, same concept. Somebody in Ihram cannot cut your hair. So your husbands will yeah. get their, their hair slightly trimmed. You don't have to shave your head off. If The guys don't have to shave their head off right away. Some Like my husband, he didn't shave his head off right away. He kept a little bit of hair. He just got trimmed. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to shave it off after Hajj. So yes. as, soon as, as soon as they get their trim, they can they can cut out. It's literally, you need to do only like a tiny inch. That's it. And uh, for the concept of inch, uh, that's what we learned from the video of Yasir Qazi. You have to grab your ponytail till here and then cut an inch. Not like a whole ponytail and making the sequence of one inches all over your hair. No, you don't. No, no, no. Just tiny bit. Yes. Oh, the sorry. Sense. You're asking about a sheet that helped us to change our clothes no we didn't have a sheet uh i think we, we used a hijab uh someone we went to the washroom that's all no no at mina remember when we changed our clothes you covered me i covered you yeah one time yeah yeah, yeah. so that see that's what we're telling you don't change your clothes at mina we were stupid to carry a whole carry on you don't need to change your clothes at mina you woke up in the morning your the buses are taking you to mina for the first day you're wearing before before your, before your travel day to Mina, you have showered, you have cleaned, shampooed, everything, all beautiful scents on your hair and your body, not on your clothes. You have clipped your nails, you have shaved off any unwanted hair, you're clean. You put on your clothes in the morning and the buses are taking you to Mina. You are now in clean clothes going to Mina, okay? You get into Mina, still nice. It's not completely, you're not burning heat. There's still a fan and AC, hopefully it's working for you guys, okay? Sometimes it doesn't work. So, mm it's uh, you know you're the buses are taking you towards mina amna uh the buses take you you're in perfectly fine clothes you're that's your rest day at mina don't let the shaitan get to you 
shaitan gets to you you start chit chatting maybe some riba or whatever don't do that okay someone i will forget this part like let me tell before i it's gone from my mind i have two things but i forget the one i don't know what was that but let me tell you the one most important thing somebody did in our camp area the pin drop gps location for the camp very very important the pin drop once you enter into your uh, camp area the mina pin drop gps location safe into your uh, into your camp area in your pool because once you are coming back from the jamarat all the camps look same sometime if you will go a little bit here there you will be lost and it will end it up for hours and hours of walking more yeah that's true so if you save your location you will know where to walk back to must 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 save your location because even though you are thinking to go one street and coming back sometime you totally forget everything looks same you couldn't able to find the street and the maktab number but that that guy saved it and we all get blessed because of him yeah i'm there yeah. so that the pin location save it yep ask how to ask your ask your husband how to do it um so yeah you're 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 gone to mina good perfectly fine clothes you spend your whole day resting at mina you don't need to change clothes for arafat okay um actually you know what what's well, funny story she changed so i was like oh okay maybe i should change i changed and then i'm like why did i change so i changed back to the clothes i was wearing originally okay so it was unnecessary to change i actually stayed in the same outfit from the morning of mina the first day of mina to the next day of jamarat to the night of uh, jamarat uh, to the next day of jamarat and the spending the night in muzalfa and then going for stoning rummy and then when i got to the hotel i finally changed my outfit you don't so need a very good girl you don't need to change don't change we were stupid to take those carry ons don't change yes we were and uh, one more thing uh, why i need i put the blister bandage inside my backpack and what happened why my feet get the blister one day in the mo- in the afternoon i was looking to the camp uh, standing in the mina carpeting area on the camp in even though the camp area all over the carpet all the places i was thinking let me cross the road and just check something i was looking something i don't know why i did this stupid thing the bare feet i walk and i cross and i come back and i got a blister because of the heat look at this how sensitive our feet allah subhanahu wa taala bless us so much the blessing even though we are not bear the uh, the heat of the makkah stones and how we going to bear the heat of the jahannam this was a superhero so and the other thing i'll mention you guys everybody's different some people will do multiple umrahs if you can do it it's you don't have to just one umrah is enough me and my husband were constantly debating i was telling my husband do you want one more umrah one more umrah one more umrah and he's like no 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 <laughs> Asia and her husband they're like they're like robots if they're awake they're awake all throughout they did multiple umrahs and we did all two only did- and when and when they go to sleep they're just knocked out you know so me and my husband are not like that we our sleep is very light so we were like Amir's like I don't want to get tired um so we did one umrah that is a requirement that is it that is it we didn't do more than that and every lecture you're going to listen to they're going to tell you make sure you're arrested for hajj make sure you because and you know what the blessing was we didn't have to walk a lot we were limited by only 1 million people and only actually less than 1 million people made it to makkah you guys it's a different case you guys it's yeah, back it it opened back to 3 4 million people and uh, uh, the we did the umrah not for ourselves uh, again let, let me tell you like uh, we really yes. don't want to do even though that umrah that umrah we was we are performing it on behalf of my um, my great gra- uh, my husband's granny on behalf of her i did it and my husband did it on her um uh grandfather on behalf of his grandfather so we um he passed away so we will like they have always have the like uh, the wish in their heart may allah give uh, he will be performing the umrah and alhamdulillah we will get the chance and inshallah we will once we will get older allah subhanahu wa taala reward us back somebody is feeling that as the same and uh, let me uh, someone you want to share something Yeah uh hopefully the app for the rauda is working very well so before you guys head to madina um i'm i'm hoping you're able to book it at least 7 days ahead of time try booking the rauda in advance okay because yeah. uh, for us the app wasn't working i mean asia has some direct connection to allah subhanahu wa taala it was working for her we it wasn't working for us <laughs> no, no no not this like so that's the all the story about the hajj will be never ending but uh, i i still remember like uh, 
uh, once the day of arafa is almost going to be over and done and yesterday i was summoned i was uh, i was recalling my memory i was standing in the park and the time of the maghrib came and i was looking at the sky and uh, you know what like i remember only you and allah subhanahu wa taala that moment i don't know where did it come from and i was think keep thinking about you once i was in the park no one is at there my kids are playing and i was thinking about the summon and that dua is is like whispering into my ear i was i was looking at to the sky that the sky looked like exactly the day of arafa and i was thinking about my last dua once we ended up in the arafa and me and saman are reciting the duas together that dua is like when allah subhanahu wa taala make us like something good like we will be able to do for the deen and we will be coming back every year for the hajj that dua touched my heart that day i was like feeling like a cry yesterday i feel like in your tiny bottle of the sanitizer in your tiny bottle of the shampoo me and saman are with you in your tiny bottle of the mist me and saman is with you and how so many of the other hujjaj all over the world we don't know them but we are with you and allah subhanahu wa taala grant us this chance to be with you and allah subhanahu wa taala call us back like for the hajj it feel like we are going with you on the roads of inshallah, inshallah. Yeah, we're going to be thinking we're going to be thinking oh you know sana amna any tahiyya they're probably doing this right now they're probably doing this this right now uh tahiyya to answer your question unless you got superwoman feet my friend you're going to need indoor slippers for sahi and tawaf okay it's marble floor and it hurts okay um you can do multiple uh, oh first Multiple. you have to do on your behalf and then you can do on the someone's behalf but i think what she's asking is that the second umrah if she does it can she do it behalf upon two three people i don't know no one in a one niyyah you can go only for one person that we ask the uh, someone the sheikh or imam in a one niyyah you can only perform for the one person but you can double check with your sheikh or imam Um okay yeah I think we are done please remember to lock the location of your mina camp on figure Mas- out how to do it on your phones I uh, I'm not really high tech but figure out how you get the pin drop location saved at one spot so anytime you want to follow it you can follow it and uh, there is a like a one more place in the area of the mina because you will never get the chance to go to that to that place ever in your life uh, unless you are going for the hajj time uh what was the area that area is a masjid e kaf masjid e kaf is the camp of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and 70 anbiya and the prophets uh pray over there and that area so if you will be able to get the chance to go to the masjid e kaf just go and pray two rakat nafal over there and um, feel the pleasure of the allah subhanahu wa taala over there and make some dua and do not forget to make a uh, dua for me and saman may allah subhanahu wa taala make each and every step of our life and rising up our kids easy busy for us and and we hope like inshallah taala our each of every effort of for us has been accepted by allah subhanahu wa taala as i just remembered something yes uh, yes saman so muzalfa okay you guys pay attention muzalfa that's where you're going to be collecting the stones for your rummy okay so the plastic water bottles you have you've been drinking in the normal water bottles um not not your special water bottles the plastic ones that you're getting at every corner mm. okay for sure yeah. uh we kept an empty one with us okay yeah we kept an empty one with us and because you don't want to collect stones when you after muzalfa what happens they take you uh when you spend the night in muzalfa you pray fajr you wake up you pray fajr they take you back to mina camp there's really no space at the mina camp to collect rocks Okay, I don't know where you're gonna do it. So Muzalfa has tons of tiny rocks, tiny, tiny, tiny rocks. But make sure you pick the rock, not the cement. That's yeah, make sure you pick the rock, thing. not the sand. Because I pick so many cements, and I still remember like Amir Bhai and Vas sorted out that stuff. Cluster of sand, they can just break. It will be sand, right? So make sure you pick the stones. The stones at Muzalfa, there's tons. And the you don't need to stone. walk around. You don't need to walk around a lot. You can literally just stand at one spot and pick up. Pick it. Pick it with your hand. Your hands get dirty. Don't worry about. <laughs> Yeah, and you just fill up that bottle. Okay, you need seven for the first day, and then twenty-one for uh, each of the rest of the days, right? Yes. So seven for the first day, and then twenty. You'll hear it in your lectures. Please listen to those lectures. Please listen to the lectures that you listen to for going to Hajj. Whoever you follow, who whichever imam. This bottle we use it to collect the stones. Stones. Oh, yeah. Yes, and so we carried it each time we went for stoning. 
and if you are not able to pick the stones from the uh, uh from the uh, like the muzalfa don't worry about this you can pick the stone according to the yashri qazi you can pick the stone uh, anywhere from the world even though you can pick the stone from the canada from here yeah you don't really even need though to. you can pick the stone from the uh, from the outside of the mina and going towards the jamarat but you cannot pick the stone from jamarat directly once people are throwing you cannot pick that stone and use that clearly it says in the lecture one of the lecture you cannot pick the stone from there no don't pick up stones with your gloves on don't do no, that no 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 i did the same mistake but i was going to tell but i don't want to make you confused you cannot pick the because you have to dig that uh, stuff like uh, uh, from the ground because there is a, like a dirt and everything but you cannot able to wear the gloves because if you wear the gloves i accidentally wear the gloves and i feel so confused on that day because shaitan is so active on that day and i messaged one of the imam and then he said like if you accidentally did it's fine but i i am not feeling comfortable even though with this answer he said if you really wants to do it you can do the dumb uh, get feed some seven uh, people and or either you can do the fasting once you return back or sacrifice the animals whatever way is uh, you are able to do it so i you're already so dirty forget for you forget uh, picking a wearing gloves it's okay it's just stones just put the stones yes, yes, yes. you're surviving <laughs> imagine you have nothing uh taya you do need the small fan from in why do you need it at mina hopefully, hopefully your mina camp ac is working why do you need it because you're going to be walking from mina to uh for stoning every single day and and most probably you guys will you i'm sure i'm guessing you guys have more walking to do it gets really hot you need that fan okay keep that fan with you just keep it at all times any you ask like about the people are selling the stone bags uh, i don't know people are selling or not but uh once you are going and spending thousands of dollar pick your own stones and you know what why the right do the purpose stone. behind picking that stones and throwing that stone once you are throwing it literally you uh, listen the lecture literally make us something decided shaitan let me do this stuff and i will never gonna do that bad habit again i did this bad because of the shaitan keep thinking about what shaitan makes you do and what is in your control okay because once you are done with the hajj when you are returning back you will feel so scared that what i feel why i feel scared once i was done with the hajj if um i was keep thinking is my hajj is done may allah uh, is allah subhanahu wa taala accept this or not is there anything mistaken or something uh, so i was keep thinking about this and once you are returning back to the uh, this dunya this world back first time once you born uh, from your mother uh, what will be happen you are baby so many years you will be learn teach and do everything and you will be keep growing up so you don't know like so many things we will miss so many uh, prayers we miss so many fasting we miss we are keep learning growing and all this stuff but this time once you return to this dunya and uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your hajj you are in your full consciousness now you know each and everything allah will wipe off each and every sense of you are accept your hajj and now you have to decide it once you will be middle back to the this dunya and this world what is right and wrong how you have to stop yourself doing the back biting how you will be stop slandering someone how you will be protect your hajj for as long as possible uh narmeen uh, good recommendations there's like only three phone plans over there just any one of those three i think there was three companies three companies there was zen and there was something else so you're going to see them there they're oh they're everywhere you're going to be able to just buy one i wouldn't i don't know if i have a preference maybe the one you try is better than ours right yes so inshallah and sorry, i send them the vpn link so download the that vpn for the android users if you are a iphone user so the kiran said like the for the iphone user facetime working for them but for the android user you have to be turn on the vpn first and then you have to go to the our whatsapp uh you want me to show it like how to turn on the vpn and go to the whatsapp again electrolytes are available on in walmart superstore and on amazon or amazon Ab everywhere <sighs> so let me show you the quickly the quick view here i go to the v super vpn app and i turn this uh, super vpn here it says connect you can't see the screen so you have to uh, there connect right i yeah. turn this on once i say connect it says connect is it will be become green right once it's green there's so many ads it's connect connected here you go once it say connected let's go back to your whatsapp and turn your whatsapp on that's all
and now you are able to do the video call or calling. Without that VPN on, you can only able to send the voice message and hear the voice message. You cannot receive the voice call on the WhatsApp. Uh, no, there's no time limit as long as it's turned on on the background or sometimes it's turned off once your phone is off. Like, uh, for example, once you are not using the app, you just keep turning it on. Saira, we did use Saudi SIM because our, it was just costing us too much for our SIM. So yes, it's like a five, 10 or a $5 depending on your plan per day. And obviously, we're calling each other constantly. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And then yeah, because so many times we are not together. Like the phone is the most important thing. That's why I kept the portable charger inside my backpack. I was reading my Quran. Uh, just give me a give you guys a one more quick tip. Like I was reading my Quran all the time in my phone, uh, the Islam three sixty, and I kept the bookmark over there. But once inside, I'm inside the Haram area and nearby the Quran rack. So I will grab the Quran from there and I start reading the Quran from there. And I will uh, save the bookmark on my phone. Next time, if I'm not able to be nearby the Quran area, Quran rack area, so I read it from my phone. So that's how I'll be managing up like the both way, not keeping my Quran all the time with me. But some people really wants to be reading their own Quran. Uh, that's totally perfectly fine. It's your own personal choice. Uh, okay. okay. I think it's lots of information. You guys don't be nervous, okay? So one last thing, whatever happens, if I know you guys are thinking in your head, we're planning this, we're planning this. Hopefully, we'll, if things don't go according to your plan, it's because they're going according to Allah's plan, okay? Yes. So and if they're going according to your plan, that's because that is also Allah's plan. Okay. So in any way, way, it's Allah's plan. Don't be upset. Inshallah, hold your anger, hold your upset. Just Allah's qadr and be thankful. You know, we had people with us who had lost all of their luggage and they still, I mean, they were fine. I don't know what we were crying about, right? So honestly, like you guys will all be fine. Don't have, you're not going on vacations. So don't think, oh, you know, I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go here. No, you're, you're, you have one goal. You have one goal and that is to complete Hajj. That is it. It may come with a few tests, uh, but you know, like inshallah, it'll go well. Allah's qadr. When we were leaving, so many people told us, remember, don't go there and complain. Don't go there and get upset. Don't go there and get into fights. Just Allah's qadr. Just hold it, hold it and hold it strong, right? Like, so let me share one more thing. Like the people are, uh, I asked the people like about like their duas. I'm going for the hajj and once I'm messaging them, they will start sending me the bunch of duas. And I was like, how I'm going to read these duas because these are the amana for them. So uh, what I did, I print all the duas from the word file and I print it in a small uh, letter and I kept the dua safe in my dua book. So I that's how I'll be ended up reading all of their duas by their name, by their own words. Uh, when uh, in the, I'm in the day of Arafat and once I was performing the Umrah, the one run, round of the Sahih, I was only doing the dua for the people who was asking me. Because if you are asking like the people, like a person, for example, like if they like ask me what dua you are doing. Yeah, the dua request, people will sending you the dua request and that dua request is amana. Their amana in your hands. So how to make it. Yeah. yeah, you have to make it. Think about this. So that's how I ended up and like doing this. And for example, so many people send me the, for the dua, please pray for my deceased mother, like my mother passed away, my father passed away, my uncle and this and that. In a one uh, chapter, like I write the every person's name. When I read the dua, I name every single person by their name, call them by their name. I don't need to, but that the people make their expectation and they really want me to call their name one time in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I did it like for that purpose. Um, Tahiya, to ask your, to answer your question, uh, shopping is, at least that's what I felt, is not no longer good at Medina. It's better it's in Mecca. And yeah. uh, that's your group's plan. If you, whenever you want to go shopping, we had five days before Hajj. Our, our, our group had five days before Hajj. So one of those days, we, after Fajr, we, no, after Fajr, from Fajr to Zohar, we separate. After Zohar, we found a good taxi driver and he took us to a place and we literally just. Near the market, very nearby the Haram, that market area. I don't remember the name, someone. What was the name? Yeah, of I don't remember the market area name too, but there are many, many markets there and. We depends on who, how much the baruch you're bringing for everybody, but we just bought like those um, salamat pack packs with you know which has a tasbi. They're like same thing everywhere, same thing everything everywhere is being sold, and you and when you're leaving Makkah you get that um bottle of uh zamzam, 
And so when we came back here, we ordered tiny bottles of Zamzam to give everybody a Stabarruk and we got dates from Medina. That's like, it depends on how you give and get. Like Asiya had a lot of family, so she bought a lot of big salamats and everything. Mm, I didn't do that for my family. I'm kind of mean. Yeah. My family go home. I bought it like something for someone too. Yeah, I went with her and she bought something. Are you crazy? I'm like, an idiot. You crazy? I never do that. I'm like, you can continue on giving me gifts. I'm not doing that for you. Uh, I, w I was with her and she still bought me something. So yeah, no, I didn't know. I didn't do that. Um, but it really depends on how you want to give. You're only gone there for 21 days. Don't get tired, please. Sketch your shoes. I'll... Look, if you're comfortable in those shoes, I get it. But I was advised again and again. Several people told us, all the previous judge told us, don't buy closed shoes. It's too hot. Your feet are going to be burning. You're going to be sweating. And when you want to put water on your feet and then, you know, you put your wet feet into your closed shoes, those shoes are going to start stinking. You so know what? I, if you are really worried about the hiking sandal, it's going to hurt my feet and this and that. You know what? Just give yourself a one try. Just say Bismillah and give your feet a one try of the Tiva sandals. It's, there's no harm. You can re free return back to the Amazon. Like just try, give yourself a one try. Let's try because everything in happening in a hut, you are going to do it the first time in your life. You are going to sleep in the hot surface. You are going to be out from your comfort zone of the, your bed and uh, on your comfortable pillow and everything. You are doing everything first time in your life. So just try. But please, please don't buy brand new sandals just two, three days before flying and put them in your... No, 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 no. You should be walking in your sandals in advance. Okay, like right now is the time you should be walking every day in those sandals. Your feet should be broken into them. Your feet should be settled into them. Don't buy brand new sandals and say, oh, you're going to wear them all around Makkah and Mina. Don't do that. Please, please don't do that. You don't know if it's going to cause you blisters. You don't know any of those things. So get something you're comfortable with. And one more thing, if you are buying a ithar or any oath or a perfume from a Makkah, before performing the Hajj, so make sure to keep it separate because if your ether bottles is, will be open and the smell goes into your uh, uh, abaya or a shirt or something, you are not going to wear that abaya or uh, clothing for the hub for a ihram because ihram shouldn't be have any smell. Faiza, my hijab was covering me till my mid calf, so below my knee. So yes. I did not take a long shoe. slip on hijab. I did not take a sheet for myself at Muzalfa. Okay. Uh, same as me. I didn't take any sheet. She, so our, our hijabs were covering us to the bottom. We did not bother taking a sheet. That's how it should be, right? So you don't need a sheet. Any other question? Mm. Okay, we're done. I think the more you guys yeah, think, the more I think we're done. Are done. So the next week, we will uh, we are inviting the uh, Dr. Noreen Sheikh, inshallah. And she's like one of our friends. She's a Canadian practice, a journal physician doctor. And she's also working in the so many other departments. Inshallah, we'll do the more introduction of her next week. So uh, for the next week, uh, uh, write down your question. If you have any questions, she has a very limited time. She will be able to figure it out only for the 30 or 40 minutes with us. So um, and she wants to do this. And I'm really I feel blessed like she'll be uh, just to be get in and give the answer of over all the question it would be really helpful for all of you girls for especially for the period medication there's so many requests and questions even though every day dm me and pm me the personal messages my my whatsapp is popping uh about this inshallah she will be able to give all the answers and because she su suggests us on her behalf of the suggestion we use this medication over there and we get it up and we use it so inshallah you will be clear out about that medication and stuff Inshallah, inshallah, and uh, she'll give you uh, some other few tips about the how to get uh, uh, rid of uh, any uh, flu and viral because she gives uh, give us uh, some other suggestions too. But I don't want to share it right now. Why we need to use the Tananol every day? She will share it like this stuff with you the next week, inshallah. So the timing will be up soon. And inshallah, we'll planning to do that session in the nighttime too. Because in nighttime, most of the women are available. And even though it's easy for her, uh, but her time is very limited. So I'm really sorry about the time. Like about, she has a very limited time to be getting and uh, give all the answers. All right. <clears throat> be easy. Allah's qadr. You guys will be fine. Goal is to do complete hajj. 
don't worry about the soft pillow and everything else and unshampooed hair. You guys will be fine. No one's getting bald for in five days. Yes, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make each and every step easy peasy for you. Ameen. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Ameen, ameen, ameen. And lots and lots of dua from the bottom of our heart for all of you. And may Allah make it easier for you than he, Allah made it for us. Inshallah. 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 So, so inshallah, the next week we, we will have like a, a like a session with the Dr. Noreen. And then after that, we'll do like a little bit of the uh, video clip session. Me and someone was trying to post it for what we have to do on the Mina and the Muzalfa and the Arafat. So me and someone is trying to make that video and inshallah, we'll post the very little clips of that video for the 10-15 minutes. So we keep you reminded about that inshallah but listen to the lectures we're not yeah must them. must must we're, we're only telling you what we listen from the lectures so yeah yeah <laughs> listen to the lectures. Stuff. it's like heads to us saira the first part was i'll quickly do it um you saw asia back pack our backpack right say yes please mina back right here it's the size of a hiking bag look ouch i'll wear it really quickly my my laptop is actually about to die but i'm wearing it so you can see the size it's like a hiking backpack see can you guys see it it's like a hiking backpack yes we are able to see it Sam. okay and see it's squishable okay and what did i put in it you need a towel for minna okay uh so a small size towel Doo -doo -doo. i put one outfit one hijab and one extra pair of undergarments and my my toiletry kit was all in here and the backpack that Asya showed, the regular everyday backpack that Asya showed. That's all I had. This is Mina. Don't pack too much. You're not going to need it. Don't try to change your clothes. It's okay if you're stinky. You're going to get stinky every day again and again and again. Don't bother with it. You're gone for survival. Survival, survival, survival. Okay. Someone in the in Mina backpack, I still remember we put the magnesium oil and the biofreeze. Remember? Yeah, so the backpack you showed, it has the Voltron gel, Small, right? Yeah, I like did carry, I carried my magnesium oil because, see, again, here's the thing. My feet hurt. So I carried mine. And also because I had a wheelchair go on my foot the first day, Umrah. Yes, head right. ride. Extra so head I carried ride. It. The medication and everything, it's all upon what you want. This this was my fear. My feet were my fear. I carried this. Because of the summon, we will also feel blessed. <laughs> Yeah, alhamdulillah, a lot of people, it helped a lot of people. I only carried one thing. Asya was my medication girl, so she did everything. Yeah. Else. Um, and extra electrolytes. Yes, electro yes uh, extra, extra. Uh, Sana, honestly, you need one only, but you can keep two if it if it helps your mind. Uh, you don't need more than one. And the brush and this and that. Uh, but don't put like your universal adopter inside your Mina backpack again. Universal adopter goes inside your Mina backpack. Sure. Okay. It, that should be with you at all times, right? So yeah, just have yes. it with you, okay? Uh, you don't need more than one. Remember, you go to Mina, you're in clean clothes. Next day, you go to... Uh, uh, is a very good girl. I kept like two and I forcefully changed myself. And I forcefully. She knew she didn't need it. Yeah, she yeah. She did it because she's like, oh, I brought it. I'm going to change. But she knew she didn't need it. That's why she's the one who forced me right now to do this session. So I don't know, why do I need to do this? Inside my, this backpack, again, like I'll show you, whenever I go to the Mina, and uh, I'm putting this in and this here and charge my power bank. This power bank, which we shared the on the Amazon link, it's a very powerful power bank, very small, very light in weight, if you got that, and easy to charge fast, very, very fast, just and like you, uh, how you charge it. Your mobile. Because keep in mind, in Mena, you're not getting your personal outlets. There's two poles with two outlets, that's it. So you need the you need your charger, your adapter, and whenever you get a chance and plug it in. Many people are going to be asking you, can I charge it on this? Can I charge it on this? Obviously, I have fully to charge your uh, portable charger and make sure once you are not using your portable charger because there is no switch. Once you plug this in, this thing, it's a start saying, um, like, uh, let me show you what it's going to be say. It's a start saying the minutes, uh, like uh, how many percentage over there. Right now, it's not charged. So once you fully charge it, so take this off because there is no switch once you are not using it because if it's plugged in that means this is using it's using the charging no matter your mobile is attached or not so make sure all the time you will take this out once you are not using 
Okay. Sorry, I have a cold, so that's why I'm in a hurry to go. <laughs> but yeah, we can hear it in your voice. So, is there any more question? No, I think I think no more questions. No more questions, you guys. Don't think about more questions. You're free, right? <laughs> but any, anyways, I'm back from my brother's wedding. Anybody who wants to message me personally, go for it. But I think Asya is taking good care of answering everybody's. No, no, message someone now. Message someone, everyone. Someone needs like, uh, like someone had a really long vacation. Now someone needs to work. It was not a vacation. I was the maid at my parents' house. Me and my sister and my baby were the maids at my parents' house for entertaining everybody. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make each and every step of your easy. Um, uh, you have our uh, e dua book on your mobile phone. You can download it. I do the PDF file and doc file for printable file. Or you have any other question, you can always message us. Uh, even though once you are in a hush time and you are stuck in somewhere, if you are not able to find any imam or somewhere, so you can reach someone or me. We can ask like the other ones, like the imams over there. And remember, uh, we're talking to you guys, but remember to keep on reminding your mehram, whoever you're traveling with, if husbands, brothers, father, whoever, also remind them to keep their anger down. I very clearly remember at Mina. Uh, a, a, a guy was a young very young guy was shouting at his wife and his wife was just she her face was like i'm holding it in but wait till we get back to england buddy like you could just see it on her face and she was really holding it in and she was hurt at the time so just be patient the shaitan, because you know what in that area the shaitan is super duper active because you are the hujjaj you are becoming the hujjaj and you have only two three days left and now you are done and gone without any sin on your shoulders. So uh, like just a little bit of the slip of the tongue here and there, you will lose each and everything. Right. So you'll be no. extremely patient no matter what will happen. Zip up. Yeah, yeah. Zip no up comment right on, here. oh my God, what is that person wearing? Or oh, uh, no comment on, oh my God, aren't people looking and they're pushing? Just Zip it's up. A, it's a Anything happened, just say subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. No psychiatric comment passing to any any single person. Just focus on your ibadah. Don't lose your patience because if you lose your patience, you're going to lose your hajj. You yeah. are going to end it up, mess up your own money, your own hajj. So you have to keep it. It's like safe. You have like, a, uh, for example, you are holding the water in the plate. And for the rest five of day, you have to walk like this. Very, very careful. That that much careful. You know what? So once you will be returning back, you have no regret in your heart. Like, oh, I didn't do this. Why would I say this and that? Things people happen. who are not giving you room to sit down for salah or space for salah, don't, don't be like, oh my God, people here. Just, it's no use saying that, right? Just be like, ya Allah, help me find a spot. Ya Allah, help me find a spot. Ya Allah, help me find a spot. Allah will find it. Don't bother saying, oh my God, look at people here. They're not, they're, they're not even giving me room to walk. Like, you know, because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And once you are sleeping in the mina camp, sometimes people will step up on your feet. So don't wake up like, ah, ah, like this. Be calm and just say like, okay, what are you going to say? Nothing, nothing. Don't uh, pass any psychiatric words or anything. Yeah, you, yeah, you, Accidentally, yeah. they will did it. This not purposely. None of the people will purposely did this to you. Okay, and that was the qadr of Allah, and you are the guest of Allah. That's fine. All right, people. All right, people. Good luck, ladies. Inshallah, Inshallah, may Allah give you an easier Hajj than he ever, he did to us. It will be super easy for you. Inshallah, may everything go well. May Allah accept it. I mean, may Allah.